This is just me. There's no in between. So this, this is just me. Is just me. Why there There's is no, no in between. In between. So this, this ain't my scene. I beg my lead. My face ain't clean. Me. This is just me. Some ways I lean, escaping green. I state my dream, not in between. This ain't my scene. I beg my lead. My face ain't clean. This is just me. Some ways I lean, escaping green. No in between. This is just me. I sound a style, I move along. No in between. this morning and um, I'm so happy to be able to introduce our panel to you this morning. Um, so our panelists today are going to be speaking to you about how to set up for entrepreneurial success in 2021. That is an epic, epic way to start our journey together this year um, and we got the best and the best for you. So we have on the panel today, Stephen Levy, Global Leadership Coach um, from Dare to Be Business Coaching. We have Linda Dane from Just Ask Linda. We have the one and only Karen Greer from Fascinating Seven. And we have the Wolf of Hamburg with us again. Yay, this is going to be so epic. Guys, thank you so much for being here with us this, uh, this afternoon. And um, I think let's get going straight away. So shall we maybe give our panelists uh, just an opportunity, just introduce yourself and uh, tell us why you're passionate about this topic and what you're going to be speaking about. And then um, we'll just get everyone introduced in that way. Can we start like that panelists? Yeah, awesome. Okay, so this person knows that I always pick him first. <laughs> Stephen Levy, please can you start it off? Okay, okay great to see you, Nestine and Linda and Karen and the Wolf and Peter and Somerville and all your listeners. And it's really, yeah, I think uh, I'm so I'm Stephen Levy from Dare to Be Coaching and Beyond. I live in Cape Town, and I look forward to 2021. With uh, I think it's going to be an exciting year. Um, as long as we can take the lessons from 2020 into it with us and there are two words that come to mind came to mind for me in entrepreneurial journeys was absolute clarity and I'll expand on that a little bit when we all chatting and why I'm passionate about this journey because I think that's it's the entrepreneurs that are going to make change in the world mm. over a, with no disrespect to the corporates but the entrepreneurs are going to are going to make the shift. It's a very important point. Thanks for raising that, Stephen, and thanks for being here. Um, shall we Thank hear you for next? Me. Shall we hear next from the Wolf? 
coming to us from his mobile office today. Yes, hello. You're my, this is my camper. So I'm staying here in this freezing camper while you, most of you are sweating. And um, yeah, so um, my name is The Wolf, a uh, consultant here uh, in Hamburg, but working uh, just purely remotely. So I'm everywhere you are. And um, 21 is a, I think it's a fantastic year because last year challenged all, all of us so, so much. Um, but also it gave a lot of time to think about things. And uh, my theme for this year is, um, is love. It's really simple. Last year was sharing. This year is love. And um, I always wake, the, I have this ritual every um, night on New Year's. My wife has to wake me up like around like five or six. And she says, uh, Wolfgang, what, will the, what is the topic of the year? And then I write it down on a napkin. And the next morning we wonder what this means. And this year is all about love. So if you have any answers, I'm looking for answers. <laughs> that is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. And what a cool ritual. Um, shall we hear next from Linda Dane? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. And I wanted to start out with a, a thought I had while we were listening to nothing in the intro. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was the same for you guys on Facebook, but anyway, sorry about that, Nisty. Um, it made me think of um, the first line of a poem that I've been following for 40 years, and this poem is called Desiderata. You may have heard of it, and it goes, go placidly amidst the noise and the haste, and remember what peace there may be in silence. It's a beautiful poem. I encourage you to go and check it out. But there is peace in silence, of course. My theme for the year is Just Listen, Linda, which, of course, is a play on Just Ask, Linda, which is my uh, business coaching business name. Um, and the reason is I felt like last year, 2020, was a great, you know, it was a bit of a crazy year for most of us. And I just went, you know, just go, 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 go. Um, driving, you know, focus, uh, just structure, just marketing and networking and so forth. But I do believe there is peace in silence and standing back a little. And that is my mantra for 2021 and just observing some of what else is going on. Um, today, I'll be sharing a few stories um, about how I've set things up for 2021. And it, it might be something that would work for you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Linda. How did you know I muted the video on purpose? <laughs> Just for you, Linda. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, okay. And last but not least, can we please hear from Karen? <laughs> Hi. Um, sure. Okay. I'm Karen from Fascinating7. And I'm actually so thrilled to be back with you guys again. It's the first panel discussion of the year. So I'm very excited about 2021 as well. Um, for me, I think that 2020 had its challenges as it did for everybody. And if it's one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of people have already pushed themselves out of their comfort zones to try and pivot and get online and do the things that they do. A lot of people have taken the plunge to get into their own businesses. And as Stephen says, um, you know, that is, is what is going to save the economy as Explore ProTech's mantra is. So I'm excited to be part of it and to also share some of my experiences of what I've had to do and the changes that I've that are allowing me to see a big difference in my business so um you know setting yourself up for success my two words for for the year is trust yourself um you've got this and when you trust yourself everything else falls into place so i'd like to expand on that a little bit further too thank you that is stunning i absolutely love that karen thank you i can't wait to hear from all of you it sounds like we have such an exciting lineup for today okay so but i'm gonna kick this up uh, off straight away with throwing a curveball right at the panel so i was reading yesterday right um 
the, there are some economists that have a pretty bleak outlook on the 2021 economic climate. For example, South Africa's economy has shrunk to where it was about 13 years ago. Um, and that happened like in, in June 2020 already, um, but we're still there. We basically, we've been put 13 years back. So taking that into account and taking into account like the real damage that Corona has done to economies worldwide, why are you here? <laughs> Why are you so positive? Why are we hearing that the theme is love and observance and trust yourself and you got this? Like, how do you tie that together? And um, this is for the whole panel. I don't know who wants to go first. Steven. You know, uh, Nestine, I think uh, last year we we were taught the lesson that we that there's no guarantees. I remember I, I remember standing up at a, a networking conference in January last year and saying, you know, this is the first time that we're going to be able to really have 2020 vision. And that was thrown out of the water in February. So, or in March. And I think we all went through a tough time last year, but if, but here we are. Um, so have we ridden through the, have we ridden through the, the storm? Um, maybe the eye of it, but I don't think so in its entirety. But what do we do? We don't, what choices do we have? What's happening, what Corona has done and the impact that it's had on, on the world is out of our control. So do we, there are two choices and I don't know if my colleagues agree, is that how do we step into it? We've got to stop worrying about what's happening outside and how do we best step into this? And that's the decision that I've taken. Um, and, and yeah, and let's go for it and let's do it. And we will, somehow we will get out of it because we've been, the world has been through change since the agrarian age, but we tend to forget about that. We forget about those things very quickly and, and we've all survived it. And I say that with the utmost respect to those people that haven't in this uh, terrible pandemic that we've experienced. Mm. So I don't know if anybody else wants to comment. Thank you, Stephen. Um, any other panelists that want to? I think for me, um, similar to what Stephen is saying, stop focusing on the negative. You know, there's a lot that we can focus on that's out of our control, but what we can control is our attitude towards what's going on. Mm -hmm. And we can control the way that we look and, you know, look at things. And we all create in the present moment. So be present, be in the present moment, show up, do what you need to do and focus on the things that you can do to make a difference and the rest will unfold. I don't think we should be focusing, you know, yes, yes setting goals, but don't focus on the end result. Focus on right now and what you can do in the, in the present moment that can make a change for you and for others. Love that. Love that. Yeah. And I would like to add to that. It's not, uh, sometimes it's not like it seems. Mm. When I, I traveled to, to Beirut, Lebanon, Lebanon, two years ago, and when I was there for five days, it was the first time there, and I, uh, were, uh, and it's a really challenging. It was before the the bomb exploded and everything. So, but when I arrived that city on the second day, there was a riot, like the governor put tax on WhatsApp and the people went on the streets. There were fire, burning tires everywhere. And it was the first time in this country and I was so afraid. And so I called a friend, he said like, you just stay in your hotel, you don't move. Um, I said, yeah, but I cannot stay here all day. And he said, yeah, I will send it, look, maybe a friend of mine will pick you up. And this friend of his picked me up and, um, and he said, Wolfgang, you don't have to worry. This is the the land is there's fire everywhere. There's military everywhere. I know you're a stranger in this country, but you don't have to worry. Like why that? Because you're with me. And they're like, oh, interesting. How that? Every I just see bad news everywhere. I see burning. This I, I'm just scared. And he said, well, I have a different question, Wolfgang. Do you like adventures? And I said, yes, but I like I need a helmet. Then I'm feel more protected. So and he put so he brought me on his motorcycle. What I didn't know he was a war photographer. So he I, so he I was went on the back on his motorcycle and we went directly into the storm. We went directly into this where the fires were and I 
and I saw the fires were not like raving crazy people. Actually, there was family standing there putting oil on on the on the tires to burn it. I'm like, kids, parents, normal people. I'm like, okay, I expect it differently. And then he went to the heart of the riot and reached past like 150 military cars. And he told me to take pictures of it uh, while we were. And it's like, hey, you cannot, you're not allowed to take military pictures. Okay, then I do it myself while riding. Like, okay, this is more <laughs> dangerous. I just uh, take pictures. <laughs> and then we went into, the, he looked at the picture, he said like, they are crappy, we have to do them again. Okay, but this is a side story. But in the end, we ended up in the core of the riots. What everybody said is we're in the city center, just people go nuts. You know what was there? People were celebrating. They were playing music. They were hugging each other. They say, there is a change. Finally, the government will react. The country comes together. We are holding hands. It's about the we, not anymore about the I. And in the center of the storm, it was calm, it was peace, it was togetherness. And I felt I'm in the safest place on earth while wow. the media went crazy. Mm. I have strong, goosebumps. Be strong message. Eh? I have goosebumps right now. Thank you so much for sharing. And I think that is like, I'm so happy with what the panel is telling us because I totally agree. I mean, I read these facts and these stories, but I read about what has been happening to the GDP so that I can be prepared to take the entrepreneurs by the hand and say, you know what, even though that is happening, look what's going on right next to it. Like, look where we are in the middle of the storm. We're like a little haven. And I personally think like, as an entrepreneur, it's been tough. It's never been more tough than in 2020. But for us, like I've never done it better. Like I've never had more hope. I've never been more excited because with change comes opportunity. And when everything is so uncertain, other entrepreneurs are more open to reach out and have you actually see them for who they are and like they're open to taking hands and moving forward together so i think that's beautiful i just love what i'm hearing from this panel i don't know if you want to add anything linda or shall we go to the to the next question uh well just just a short one that was a beautiful story wolfgang thanks for sharing um yeah my my comment about this topic is also that for those successful entrepreneurs and success is defined by yourself not by rands and cents or gdps or economic graphs um if you know I, if you had a, a good year last year um raise your hand yeah i mean maybe not <laughs> I had, so all five of us, I had a great year last year. And that's not to say that there were bumps <laughs> along the road. There were bumps along the road. There was a time in winter, in our winter here in South Africa, where uh, it was cold and it was miserable. And I had no clients and no money. And I thought, um, oh dear, this is, <laughs> this is not good. Um, but within, within five minutes or within a day, I said, no, 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 no. As an entrepreneur, you cannot have that um, mindset. Mm -hmm. You have to keep going. You have to keep talking to people. You have to keep marketing. You have to keep asking. You have to keep trying. And that's what I did. And if I look back and I do reflect on 2020 right at the end and the beginning of this year, it was a great year for <laughs> networking and clients and everything and it, it feels like to me I, i'm sure people share this you know i'm sure i can't be the only one that 2021 is now an opportunity to um really nurture those seeds that you planted last year to really start seeing the buds come out those very beautiful colorful buds and eventually they will bloom and that's the message of hope I give to all entrepreneurs um, listening or even in our broader tribes. 
Thank you, Linda. I love this so much. It's just stunning. I can't wait for all the flowers to just be blooming. I'm going to watch all of you and I will have you on here when you're blooming, like in full bloom, and we'll do like a blooming panel discussion. That'll probably be when, when Wolfgang gets to show us his new red hair. So, Wolfgang, we haven't <laughs> forgotten about the hashtag red hair challenge. <laughs> you can look like a little Fortuna. <laughs> Okay, anyway, going forward, guys, I am now super excited, right? So there's hope now. But now I'm an entrepreneur and I'm not sure what am I supposed to be doing. So I feel like I can be hopeful, but what what do I do next to make 2021 this amazing year where everything just starts blooming? What do I do? Can I answer you on it? Because you always it's... go first, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so it I, would, I think, you know, listening to Linda and um, what she said, and I loved what she said about uh, we've got to be careful not to get too caught up. And I know the object is obviously to make money. We have to, otherwise we it, it's an important part of business. Um, but not the focus there. And I totally agree with what she said, is that we've got to be careful how we measure our success. Well, not be careful, but what we're focusing on. Because we all have different interpretations of success. But uh, she mentioned it, Karen mentioned about folk being in the now, which I absolutely loved. And having that, so what I want to share with you is uh, what came out for me was absolute, and you said now um, that the entrepreneurs, where do we go? You used that, you used that word. And that's, I mentioned earlier that two words that came up for me from 2020 was absolute clarity. As entrepreneurs, be absolute, take time to be absolutely clear on where you want to go. Forget about the how, for, no, for now. Um, because when you've got clarity and you focus that everything that you do, you start controlling your strategy, you're getting around there. And I want to just highlight that it's not, it doesn't mean that we're going to get there. There's no guarantees. Uh, and if you don't believe that, just look back into March 2020. But it, it increases the probability of you getting there and it keeps you focused. So I would, I would say that the first thing is just be absolutely clear on where you want to go. Um, can I add something there? Thank um, you. Stephen, uh, I agree with you, but I, I go one step back from that. Um, and as you start 2021 and every year going forward, reflect on where you are right now. How are you doing? in every aspect, um, mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially. So you might need help with that. You might need to speak to another entrepreneur uh, to help you to figure out where you are right now. Is there anything holding you back? Is there anything that you didn't finish back in 2020? Is there anything you started that you you felt like was gaining some momentum? Just just sit down. Personally, I like to write it down, draw it in pictures if yeah. it's better for you. Um, you know, but but reflect. Take that time. I took two entire days last week to do that, and the link back to Stephen's uh, point is that once you've done that, once you know where you are right now, then you can set the destination. If you don't know where you are, if you're afloat at sea, then how are you going to figure out how you're going to get anywhere? So just figure out where you are and then set the destination and dream big. You don't have to dream big, hairy, audacious goal, Jim Collins big necessarily, just bigger than where you are today. And that could reflect in financial numbers if you made 10,000 rand a month or 3,000 euros, then just set the bar higher than that. How much higher is up to you, but set it higher. And if you had three leads, set the bar higher and make it five. That, you don't have to try and do everything all at once, but have a destination mm. in mind. Absolutely. I Wolf wants to add something. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> I love Linda, I will take up this point of seeing what you have and starting re recapturing that one because 
a lot is about goal setting is like is making it different than before and what i like about the idea about looking what you have i would the first goal i set in my year is when i look back like i look what i have for example i had a, this year I had a, last year I had an amazing time with my family so one goal of my next year is to keep what i have one goal is to have an amazing time with my family not better not worse to keep it that's already an amazing goal to me and another thing was um having amazing like uh, to amazing connections building new connection with people so but also really selective it was not just being all over the place so i started making new a lot of new friendships and have really deep talks with people so i want to keep this i, I want to keep this and um to keep this conversation with certain people i want to keep this so one these so i have three goals where i have i just keep what i have appreciating what i have and just maintaining it is already an amazing achievement so i'm already would i know when i achieve this i'm happy and then i can see on top of that what else do i want but on the sense of not of how do i become better like because i'm already enough so what can i what would make life uh uh what are new things i want to explore what are new things i want to learn what are new things uh, uh new people i want to help so it's this appreciating what you have and keeping that as a goal that my core point uh, <laughs> i also just want to add that um don't forget to pat yourself on the back you know for the stuff that you have achieved mm. because we we tend to forget to do that we're so busy chasing the next goal and trying to um, you know, so in your reflection, make sure that you actually acknowledge the things that you've done. And I, it's a big lesson that I had to learn um, mm -hmm. over December time where somebody actually stopped me and said, have you actually given yourself praise for how you've pivoted and what you've done and the achievements that you've made? And then the other thing is, you know, I think it's Simon Sinek that says, the only person you should compare yourself to is how you were yesterday. So every day waking up just to try and be a better version of, of what you delivered and who you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I've been living with that as well. And then the last thing on that is collaboration. Find a team, a high vibe team that can actually just keep you in the focus, in the flow. When you are having a rough day, we all do. We have a human, you've got a team around you that you can just lean into, even if it's a joke or an inspirational quote that you read, sometimes it's just exactly what you need for that moment. So it's very important to realize you're not on this journey alone. You know, there are people out there that are there to help you as a tribe and collaborate with you. And I think that that has been a saving grace for me in all this time, just knowing that at the touch of a WhatsApp button or whoever, anyone's going to different platforms, I don't know, but we've got, we've got support and you never, ever yeah. alone. So find your tribe. Mm. I love Absolutely. that. That's beautiful. And I think like for me, for one, I would never have accomplished what I did in 2020 which I think is absolutely amazing because I basically like managed to go from being like an accountant entrepreneur, you know, who was just like investing my own time and getting like, you know, a reward for that to finding Peter and Peter just opened up this whole floodgate of more opportunities. And now, you know, my earnings, what I can do, what I can achieve, the opportunities is not limited in terms of just me anymore it's 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 basically limited to the tribe and look what amazing people we have on the tribe <laughs> <This is> so... <laughs> but you know nestine your your the entrepreneurs that are watching the show is and just let them know that we all sitting here face the same challenges it's just probably the attitude um so i can i'm sure that i speak for for my colleagues but they I don't want them to think that we're sitting here and there's some magical thing that we have that uh, we weren't affected by what's going on on the outside. We face exactly the same challenges that everybody else faces. But what I want to say is that you um, you provided a platform where, where you generated a, a tribe and an atmosphere of positivity. So it's also who you're hanging around with, who you who you're mixing with. If you're going to mix mix with negative people, you will always see the negative. If you're going to mix with positive people, and that's what Explore ProTech has helped us do, is you're always looking at the positive because that's the conversation that's being had. Mm. 
And and that's what helps. I'm sure it helped me, and I'm sure it's helped uh, Karen, Linda, Wolfgang. Yeah. Uh, we've all chatted, and so on. So it's also that environment that you that you step into. Uh, yeah. That you also have a choice. Of. Mm -hmm. But being part of the tribe is also fun, you know. Yeah. And that's the thing: when you're laughing and you're spontaneous and you're having fun, you're creative, aren't you? You get inspired. So it's just to exactly. you know, life can be serious and things can happen around you that are really tough. We're not you know mitigating sure. that, but to actually step into this space where you can just laugh and it really yeah. does it changes your whole vibe and when you're yeah. high vibe you can attract positive things so. exactly I, I was struggling with my elevator pitch and now a new elevator pitches yeah yeah I, uh, <laughs> it's like you know don't have to say anything yeah. i think um you know uh, i i i'll share a quick story if i may people know it but the very first uh, global online speed networking event back in uh, October or yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. September. September. It was one of those. Um, I, you know, I went to Nestine's um, pre preparation session, and she say, "No, you must have this elevator pitch." And I had one, but it just seems so dull. It just was, you know, hi, Linda Dan, just us, Linda Business Coaching. I help business owners to grow their business, something like that. I said, "No, no, no, I can't do that. That's like boring." So I came up with a P with glee. Um, tagline P standing for plan execute action so the businessy stuff but glee being my philosophy in life uh, which is to grow learn empower and enjoy now the growing and the learning I've hardly ever had a problem with it's just been my lifelong um, actions but I had a I had a quick look again at the last two the E's and said am I really empowering others and am i really enjoying life and today i looked up the entomology etymology of the word enjoy um and it's made up of un french and joie for you know and it means to give joy as well as to receive joy mm. and i went aha and there is no doubt in my mind that every uh, that very first um global online speed networking event and the ones that I attended afterwards and these coffee sessions on Friday have been the most joyful that I have felt in many a year. And thank you, Nestine and Peter, for inviting us into that space. Yeah. That. It's only a pleasure, Linda. It's good to hear it. Really good to hear it. Okay, so, but I have a next question for you. Thanks for sharing that though. I'm, I'm really happy. I was wondering actually, cause you seem to just like be this sunshiny, amazing little person um, ever since I met you anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, that's beautiful. Um, Claire is saying, hi, you looking good, Joel. Colors matching. <laughs> <laughs> Planned, <laughs> not really. My, my next question is, um, okay, so I am sometimes, and this is something that not a lot of people know about me, right? I can be crazy obsessive compulsive in certain aspects of my life. Like most of the time I'm chaotic and all over, but with goals, oh my goodness, to like, I wanna know how do you, <laughs> Peter's covering his head cause he's seen my list. I want to know how do I write them down? How do I make sure they get executed? How do I track them? Like, do I view them first thing in the morning? Do I view them every night? Do I view all of them at the same time? How long can the page be on the goals that I've written down? Is there one for every single aspect of my life or is there three for every single aspect of my life? And how do I? Yeah. <laughs> want to know practically and do you guys know how many software versions there are out there that want to confuse you and help you and then they actually just like make it more difficult for you like you can track it in a circle you can have a chart you can have a color mapping you can have it in a book you can do a journal about it like i've tried everything i just just help <laughs> can the panel just help practical <laughs> how to goal setting please for accountants <laughs> for people with yeah. that mindset of course um if if i may um <laughs> I, I think from my side myself and Nestine are like complete opposites um <laughs> Nestine loves writing lists and i love not looking at them 
um, it's, and I think because we are so opposite, we have two different different opinions on how to create a to do list. Whereas Nastine will write down long lists, and you know, if I've got to set a meeting and it's with somebody, I will draw a picture of what I remember about that person, and that's my list. The little the little doodle picture, that's my list. So I think, um, from my side, you know, if you're going to set goals, um, always set something that you know is achievable. Um, when you know it's not achievable, if you're doing business or working all on your own, and you have all these things to do, always be careful not to work yourself into the ground. It's um, it's a it's a sure way to actually um, just pile so much workload on yourself and expect so much from yourself. So I think um, it's good to write lists. It's not good to annihilate yourself with pressure. So I think because we're so opposite, I'm like happy-go-lucky and Nestine is like, look at all that we have to do. So I think <laughs> also on the, on, 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 the, on the other end of it, um, if you are in a tribe or you have people around you and you're not... Oops. You're frozen. Yeah. Peter. Oh. Okay. <laughs> While while Peter's frozen, Nestine, on on your thing, I think goal setting is first. The first for me, the first uh, thing of goal setting is to get whatever's in your head out of it, because that's where the conf that's where a lot of overwhelm will come in, because we sit with everything in our head and we don't empty that vessel. So it, it makes it more uh, bigger than what it generally seems. And then when you put it on paper, is and then put it onto whatever format works for you. For some people it'll be paper, for Peter it's drawing, for you it might be actually physically writing, for Linda it might be putting it on post notes and, and sticking it over a wall and then putting it in her glee jar, uh, for Karen it might be, for Karen it might be uh, putting it on the computer. So I think it's to find out also what works for you, but just, just get it so where you can visualize it. And the other thing I just wanted to say on that is is there is there a limit to how much you can put down whatever you want and that's what i was saying earlier don't worry too much about the how right now put it down once you got it down you can see it and then you can prioritize it and then exactly i agree with what peter's saying is is then choose maybe two or three that you need to do now before you get to this step okay, which which do i need to do first and then just focus on that Forget about the others. Put them aside. Don't let them distract you. And we can easily get distracted. Um, I so distract myself to the point where yeah, I'm not doing listen, anything on the list. Listen, I do. I'm, just, I'm freaking out because there's a four-page list now. Like, no, Nestine, Nestine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on your side. I, I do have four pages of goals hmm. and. You do. I yeah. do. <laughs> I do have, I do have, um, so, so that's what I was doing last week, Monday and Tuesday. So I have, I have a one page strategic plan, which has the financial numbers on from last year, the previous year, my goals for next year, my goals for the three to five year period and the big hairy audacious goal. It has my values. It has, um, it has my brand promise to my clients. It has my, um, elevator pitch and a theme for the year. So it has quite a lot. And I work through that with, with my own clients and it's working quite well now in January. Um, so I'm welcome, you're welcome to set up some time. I'm happy to help you with that if you need it. But, That'd be amazing. But yeah, I find, and because I am extremely structured, uh, very left-brained, extremely focused, addicted to, to task lists and to-do lists every single day of my existence. You know, here's one, this, I, you know, this is a short one, but otherwise <laughs> they're long every day. <laughs> Peter collects mine. Let's yeah. see. Yeah, he has a box just for lists. Everything. And I cross them off as I go. Then I do, um, I, I do two other things. I have a, a sheet, it's a spreadsheet with little, um, and it's quite colorful this year. I've made it very colorful. Uh, and it's got, I've extracted from the paper document into the spreadsheet, um, sort of one line as in all those aspects of my life. So even as much as eat well, sleep well, um, exercise well. 
and have spend time with family or go on an adventure as well as have coaching sessions, call client, you know, and it's just a sort of um, maybe a list of 20 in my case. And every day, almost every, well, not every day, at the end of the day or during the day, I put a smiley face when I do these things. So I mm. am pretty um, obsessive with this. Uh, but it works to remind me where I'm not spending attention, you know, where the smiley face aren't, then I'm not spending any time on those things. And I have to ask myself why, or just change my day to focus on something a little bit different. And the second thing I do, of course, is at the end of uh, the week, or if something happens right now, is to use my little uh, notes and stick uh, something in here uh, so that it's there for the future back on. So um, yeah, I'll help you out there, Nestine. Uh, I am very structured, very organized, and it works for me. And if that works for other people, I'm happy to share how it works. That would be so cool. Maybe we can create like a checklist with all the different mm. like categories and eventually we'll have a whole diary that people can just get and like yeah. <laughs> Peter smile. Having said so, that, not the project. <laughs> Uh, having said that, I think we should go to Karen or Peter to help us out with those people who hate what I just said. Yeah, and, and the wall. Rather, <laughs> and, and want an alternative. Karen. Yeah, yes, I want to know as many different structures as possible. <laughs> yeah, mine is true. I'm very much like Nestine, actually. That comes from my archetypes, though. So I know that that's uh, detail alert is not my thing. Um, I have a book that I write in every day. It's called my Flashes Journal. And as I get inside <laughs> to do something, I write it down and then I've got a little column and I tick it. Needless to say, I'll try and pick three and I carry over what I don't finish. But what I have started doing, which I have to say, is when you've got so many things to do, it gets very overwhelming. So I actually really pick, you know, one of the things I had to do, Stephen, was that training, you know, I had to finish. And I literally sat down and instead of trying to do a little bit of everything, I focused on, let me get this finished so I can tick one off. And that empowerment of going, tick, it's done. Um, then you can go on to the next one. It gives you a sense of, of satisfaction. Whereas if you start too many things and you've got to try and finish them all, you don't ever finish anything. And then it actually puts you back. It makes you in a very negative space because you're disappointed in yourself that you actually didn't do it. So yep. be kind to yourself and just start with the easy things, the things that are quick to do as well. Get them done because that already puts you in a space of like, oh, geez, I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. Even if it's the quick stuff and then go on to the more tedious tasks. That's the way I do it. So. <laughs> Yeah, Not so you're, yeah, yeah, cool. Very good um, way of doing a job. So, I, Linda, and uh, so I, okay, I love what you do. It's really, but if I just think about this list, oh my gosh, I'm already dying. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Peter, I'm more like you. I love doodling, visualizing things. And I, there is two, like, there is two ways I work with. One thing is long-term goals, and one is like short things. So I can show them, share them both. Oh, so yes, about please, long that's, that's one of my other issues, by the way. It's like, because, no, really, like, because your, your short-term goals need to tie into your long-term goals, which need to cover all aspects of your life so that you're completely balanced. And then your action plan for every single day has to be different for every, day, every single day. And it has to feed into your short-term goals, which feeds into your long-term goals, which ties back to your values. So, and by that... <laughs> You guys get what I'm saying with the OCD thing with gold. <laughs> Sorry. So please, 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 Wolf, I can't wait to hear. Okay. So what I do, so I draw a picture of today. So I take a picture, like a, a, a spread, and then I put left side, right side. So I just like bend in the middle. And then I start painting one side and this strip right, like, like me in the middle. And then I say like, what are the people around? Like, how do I feel today? Right? Like, what do I have? And I put also like things I acknowledge. And, and so I paint the picture of today. And, um, and then I put on the other side, um, and, the, and it's important, you may have to paint it black and white. The left side is past today. It's like today, black and white. And then you paint the other side, the, the, the future you wish you want. So, and it can just be like, Wolfgang and uh, raving hands, 
from like that face and and you make it really like and you add colors to it and i don't know so you make it really bright and colorful but you put the things on the left side which you have and then you paint the other side and um and for that you have and because it's so attractive as on the right side is your future side and you and then say like oh i want to travel i want to see mountains i want to learn italian i want to travel to south africa i want to be more organized and i put all these things in it but i doodle it so i draw it and everybody can draw everybody can make um awesome drawings like me <laughs> and um it, it only has to be meaningful to me so and then i have these two sides where I want, like where today, where I want to go to, and I can already feel them. And then I say three actions to get to there. Basically, so I say, I make three arrows. I make it really ugly now. So it's just like put three arrows on top of it and write, what are the three big actions to get to this life? What is my life today? What is my life tomorrow? What are the three things I have to do? First thing I have to I have coffee and kiss my wife every morning continue doing that and the second is um hang out with a tribe build business in south africa so it pays the trip to travel to Af south africa for me and the family so and uh third thing is um i don't i don't know right now but um so it's this it's this thing like life today life tomorrow and three extra steps so it's more for the visual people and they can really put it up on your wall and i have it also like in a book and then it's I see it every day and it becomes really strong for visual thinking people. Mm. And um, the next thing is what I don't like about, I appreciate to do lists, but they have one problem. I never, I'm more the, I don't know how, what kind of animal I would say, it, but it's more Mesa squirrel. I start like running there, doing a little bit, then I do something else. Then I do something else, and then I get I'm back the to the same. first one. I'm the same. I'm so the same. <laughs> so, so on the weekend, I, what I do, basically I draw a pie chart, and I put all the things in I want to do. Like, one thing is going biking. The next thing is going with a dog, spending time with the family, uh, finishing my paperwork, whatever, right? So, and I have all these piles. So I have like, I make a pie chart of my weekend and all the things I want to do. And, um, and then I say like, oh, like starting going with my dog, uh, or let's say finish the paperwork. I just do one step and then I just put a little bit of marks. Uh, oh, I already have done it a little bit of it. And then I stop because I just put the paperwork already on my desk and then I stop. Then I have kiss, uh, uh, coffee with my wife, I spend family time. So, and then I write, oh, cool, I had already some family time. And then I go back to the paperwork and fill up that. So over the weekend, this circle fills up. And um, actually, I, I only do this on the weekend. I don't know why I don't do in, in the during the week, but but on the weekend, it always makes me so happy because with this, this visual pie chart, I can always come back and I see what I missed. And actually, I mostly get 90% done. And because I can work incrementally and not everything at the same time. That's Love my... that. That's so different though. But I've been looking for something like, I think what I need is a combination of Linda, Stephen, the Wolf and Karen, like all in one go. Because <laughs> I once upon a time, I had this one thing that worked for me for planning, right? So when I was doing my honors degree in accounting, my uh, certificate in chartered accounting, um, it was a really big year. It was, it was very important to stay focused. So I had for each subject, I literally drew this like A3 poster. With each subject, I had a little bar graph. And at the top, I said like pass, you know, auditing, pass accounting, pass whatever. But then I had spaces in the bar where I could like spend time on each subject. And then I would color it in, like if I did a paper, like a past paper and I completed it, I would color in like a bit. And if I did like whatever, that way I could always see like for each of the subjects, like how Perfect. far along I was to getting mm. to. Mm. So I think that's part of my OCD. It's like I want to make a difference. I don't just want to be executing like 
four pages of list like there must be something in there that you can do first or at the same time or i have to be extremely effective another quickly just on that topic um another nice thing you mentioned post-its earlier don't laugh that off because post-its work really really well if you go around the corner into my office you do the brain dump like steven said in the beginning get everything out of your head and you put it into categories and you put each task underneath your main category on a post-it thing stick it on your walls and i'll tell you being ocd nesting you're going to want to get rid of those post-it steps you're going to walk past they're going to irritate you until you actually pull it off and you can say that one's done I, I, I'm, I'm like that <laughs> and it really does so the flashes journal and all of that is my huge brain dump and then i'll take that and i break it into my little post-its and I, it's a challenge it's, a, it's like an exciting challenge for me like oh which one can i remove today <laughs> yeah <laughs> give, us, give yourself some fun while you're doing it <laughs> yeah. i think uh, from my side to keep uh, nistine focused and um, what i actually do is i hide her list <laughs> He does, he does. <laughs> and the funny thing is it works. <laughs> it's, it's the actual list that makes the confusion when there's just so much to do. And when she can't see the list, then she's not as confused. And she's like, what, what was I supposed to be doing again? I'm like, no, you're supposed no. to be doing this. And then I'll leave it. And then she'll, and then that gets done. Um, so, <laughs> so for That's me, I, I, just, I just take the list and I hide it. That's amazing sharing it. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm past the point of where I can help myself. Like, that's when you also need to realize when you actually need a coach, right? That's going to compliment you. Like, for example, I've learned so much from Stephen, who gave me, like, so many free coaching sessions for my birthday. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> because it's just like, he it does the same thing that Peter does, which is like when I'm, like, in that space where I literally, I cannot see the wood from the trees anymore. Like, I'm so confused and there's lists everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, okay, so what's going on? And I'll be like, this is going on and I have to do this. And then we have to do that. And if I don't do this, then this is, and then he's like, okay, cool. So what can we do? Like, right now? what are we focusing on? What's camp one? That also helps Steven, by the way, like the camps, because then, you know, like, this is where I need to go first, you know, mm -hmm. and then you just pick everything on the list that's going to help you get there. So like the rest of the stuff, you say it has to either wait or be delegated. Yeah, so it's putting that, it's not not uh, not getting rid of the lists, put them aside. And again, it comes back to that prioritizing. It works for me. Um, so I'll mm -hmm. take, I have I have a long list, probably also pages, and I've even got to find the right books that I wrote them in. That's, that's my challenge. And then is um, pulling out what, and, and that's where I come back to knowing where you're going. I pull out what is going to contribute, what I have to do now. So it's like prioritizing as well and narrowing your list down. It's pointless me doing number 30 on the list if I haven't done number 10, which should be before it. And then I'll focus on number nine, 8, 9 and 10 and then I can, then it's done. So it's pretty much what Karen was, what Karen did, is focusing. She did a training, get that done. She actually focused on it, no distractions. She got it done. Now she can comfortably move on to the next thing. So. Her list was overwhelming, but she actually narrowed it down. Because you cannot tackle it all at once. You can't climb Everest and you can't hit camp one, two, three, and four all at the same time. It's impossible. Damn it. <laughs> so, so Wolf, Wolf, you're not coming with me to Kilimanjaro. <laughs> We're going to be up that mountain in two seconds. Yeah, we can, but we can do three first, and then one, and then two, and then four. Ah, I love your way of thinking. Take this, uh, Dean. No, 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 no. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm going with Linda. Uh, we'll take our time, Stephen. We'll take yes. our time. We'll enjoy uh, some, some chat and some ooh. food, and we'll get there eventually. <laughs> Oh, I could tell you a fascinating joke with the bulls, <laughs> but I won't do oh, it. Not, not on air. <laughs> oh, no. oh, let's take the bus and just take four, three, two, one, just slide down. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm just oh. going to get to the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the catch. Oh, you missed I, out. I, I have a question. I have a question to you guys. You are smarter what? than me, so you always have to watch, ask you smarter than you. So, <laughs> I know. It's a... So the question is like, when I have, yes, I also have some lists where I think they have to do. So what I realize, there's this one thing I really should do is the most important thing of the day. 
and of course I don't do it, but I'm finishing all the others really fast. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, I've done a lot of things, but not the one thing I really have to do. How do you feel about that at the end of the uh, day? Uh, both. Like, it, it's, it's, it's a, like, like great, super productive, but also a little bit, yeah, it's a little it's ashamed, maybe, it's like, because I knew it's the most important thing, right? It's like, it's totally unsatisfying. And I know I heard of these things, do the eat the frog first and thing like yeah look at the frog in the morning it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh but i can do little things what? So, i am the same i have the same problem you know what the you know guys what the interesting thing probably is about that what i what i've you know when people say ah oh, i don't have time for that i don't have time for this i don't have time for that well of course we all have the same amount of time um, and we choose to do what we really want to do in that time. So when you say, I have to do something, Wolf, it probably immediately in your head goes, well, I'm not going to do that because I have to do it. I don't want yeah. to do it. Uh, it, isn't, it actually isn't really important to you for some reason because otherwise you would do it and you would enjoy doing it. And if that's the case, um, you know, I think you've got to, unpack a little bit um, to figure out why you want to do it. What was it about mm. that task that mm. made you uh, procrastinate and defer? And, you know, I'm not going to enter life coaching space now because I'm not one of, uh, you know, I'm not that, but, I, <laughs> but I've been to, I've, I've spent time with, with coaches uh, who look into that. And you've got mm. some, you've either got a limiting belief about it or even what we really need to think of is, is there a better way to do this or is there somebody else who could do it for me in which case you've got an entire tribe to ask where it's, where they're better at it or happier in doing it like excel spreadsheets i love i'm sure stephen does as well but there's a number of people who hate them so give me stuff and i will crunch numbers till the cows come home <laughs> because i enjoy it i love looking yeah. for the patterns we all have yeah. our own strengths and we don't all have every strength so we can't possibly be all things even to ourselves. And I think, I, I think, I believe that's why we procrastinate on certain activities and we put them off because I've done it myself. Phoning, mm-hmm. cold calling people is just, it's just, it's something that I, I just keep putting off day after day after mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. Why? I, you know, you've got to dig deep and figure out why, or you've got to give it to someone else to do. Say, I can't do this. How about uh, Somerville? Hey, can, Somerville, can you cold call all these people for me? <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, so I, I wonder, and I, I don't know if it's true for you, Wolf, but I think it, I think we put off things that we just aren't really excited about doing. And yes, we have to do things like admin or whatever in our business, but we must just recognize and make and change the narrative, change it to something different so if it is admin and somebody said one of my clients said this the other day you know they hate admin like that well if you hate admin you're not going to do it never you're going to procrastinate every day because you hate it so i said well don't stop calling it admin and i I forget exactly but i think i think they said um they suddenly came up with a term that was um executing my next step or something they called it something different that suddenly turned their mind into well that's important yeah, yeah. for me to get to the next yeah, phase yeah. so that's good. thank yeah. you so much yeah Justine, i see that marlon has actually posted a really relevant question um <laughs> maybe we should give marlon a chance to actually just pose this question to us because i think yeah. that fits in quite well cool marlon my friend you're up so you can call call people for them now right that's what Marlon's <laughs> are for. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what if, I actually love the, you know, her last suggestion. And, and really, it's, it's kind of like that whatever it takes sort of mentality. So I was going to say, the answer that whatever it takes, you know, if we need to get people through the door, let's, let's make the, let's do that cold calling. Um, but I, I also am not really a fan, even though I will, you know, like I said, I'll do whatever it takes. But um, I, I think that my, Thank you, Peter, for, for, for seeing that comment. And I think the question is, 
I have to read my question. Um, so yeah, it's the beginning of the year, right? So everyone, everyone's super motivated, and I don't think it's really hard to be super motivated to, from last year. You can, you know, the, you can a lot of people can feel like you know this, this is the next step. How do you guys stay motivated? How do you? What's gonna keep you going? Because it's very easy to like, okay, new year, new goals, new person, new me, and then like end of January. <laughs> you know what's your suggestions around that that's a good question and i tell you what what's come up for me in the last few years is we all have new year's resolutions i always i've started asking myself more and more why am i doing this and that needs to be really purposeful so you know, I'm going to go back to those ones that we really go, you know, like we're going to get this year, I'm really going to be healthy and fit and I'm going to lose weight. Um, but but sometimes why? Just, but why do you want to do that? Exactly, so yeah. exactly, Linda. So, you know, ask yourself why and not, I want to lose, I want to lose it. Why do I want to lose weight? What is it doing to me? And if it's, if it's strong enough and it's purposeful enough, you will motivate, you. you'll probably drop a lot of the resolutions that you that you came up with um, and focus on those that are really meaningful. I would say add to that, it's the little things, um, in, as a German word which I invented, you cannot look it up, it's called Zwischenfreude. Zwischenfreude means like in between joy, like this little, like this, this, you, know, you need to always have like in between success, happy, like being, seeing a result. So, and when I go on this, on this big road, like I want to, uh, we fit more in shape, um, get my taxes done, uh, before the accountant calls me and, uh, and this thing like, so the question, like, how do I make these little rewards in between so that I know Oh, just by sorting my out my my paperwork, that I have this. Here, you you said it before, like this little clap, right? This little celebration about, um, great, we achieved something, mm -hmm. and um, and I do this especially in workshops because if I, if I have a long day, a one day workshop, for example, people are in the beginning they're really excited, and then before lunch they get tired, they get hungry, then they get after lunch they have the sugar high then they drop so and i always like especially after they've done something there's this pause like oh we, we achieved that and in this pause i always say oh let's have some like celebrate ourselves in between we've achieved something so celebrating the pause means you've done something so every time i realize i i am not doing something means I have achieved something and then it's quite the question what did we achieve and um, it has to remember oh great I already have done one percent of what I wanted to do but I already did something so let's continue I have one thing to add I saw a post and it's somebody that I follow um, quite quite often and she said the same thing. You start off with such motivation, even for your news resolutions, you know, people do that. Mm. And she said, have you ever thought, why not start your year on a different date? Why does it have to be the 1st of January? Make it the 1st of February. So January, you've got time to actually keep the heart going and that, and then say, right now I'm gonna officially start. Just move your date and actually stop putting so much pressure on yourself that it's 2021, it's gotta be a good year. It's going to be a good year, but give yourself time to ease into it so that your motivation yeah. can stay up. And if you Very don't nice. do all the things that you've set yourself for January, so what? It's the beginning of the year. You can always start again. So just keep focused on what your end goal is and whatever you need, take the pressure off yourself. Yeah. Day by day, Such, in the present moment. I love once that. Again. Such a and nice why idea. Can all, yeah, why can only the Chinese have a New Year's in the middle of the year? Quite <laughs> right. I, I want to have the Wolf New Year. And it starts um, someone. <laughs> well, well, tell us when you're starting it and we'll celebrate it with you yeah, and then we can bring everything that we haven't achieved in our new year we can bring okay. into your new year we can start again okay i will you will you, you will notice you will notice the difference when i wear have red hair you will know the new year starts okay <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I hope, I hope you guys Brilliant. are ready because I hope you guys are ready because I'm about to unlock the secrets to the universe. Um, and a, a really um a deep question. Um, have you ever been to a rock concert where you are the only person in the audience? Uh, no. 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 How how inspiring do you think it would be, or how much fun do you think it would be to be the only audience member? Not very fun. Not really. Um, yeah. So, if, if yeah, it would be absolutely dull. I mean, okay, unless the music it was would be Bon Jovi, the, then I'd just yeah, the, go and, and jam with it. Well, well, the music, the, the the music would be great, but you're experiencing it on your own. Yeah. So there's no, but when you put a crowd around you, it creates euphoria. It creates that sense of we are all here. We are all yeah. listening to this concert. Take that same concept. You're an entrepreneur. You're in business. You're inspired. It's the beginning of the year, but you are on your own. It does not take much time to lose that inspiration. Uh, you know, you fall flat on your face very quickly or the first um, little bump comes along and you're like, oh my goodness me, what do I do? Um, it's because you're on your own. St st stop doing it on your own. Doing it on your own is an old mentality. It's an old way of doing business. Um, and becoming successful on your own is, is becoming more increasingly difficult. Mm -hmm. So the secret to the universe, stop doing it on your own. Um, Prepare your goal so that your tribe yeah, can keep you accountable. Find, and find people. Yeah, find people that are going to, um, that have similar goals, find people that have similar um, things that they want to achieve, um, find people that have, um, they don't necessarily have to do the same thing as you, but they have the same um, end goal in mind, and hang around with them, um, create, French, create friendships, yeah. network, Build, you know, build relationships with people that can actually be beneficial to you as much as you can be beneficial to them. And then when you're feeling down, they've got your back. And when they're feeling mm -hmm. down, you've got theirs. Mm -hmm. Feeling inspired is not about yourself. It's about everyone. So mm -hmm. stop, stop doing it on your own. Mm. Yeah, that's profound, Peter. And you know, I wanted to say to Marlon, one of the things, um, I suppose also as you get older, you get a bit more selective in terms of the resolution. So for me, it's not New Year's resolutions. Um, I've actually just put a, a series on Instagram called 2021 resolutions. Mm. I just, ref I couldn't bring myself to using the word New Year for the reasons that Karen gave. And Marlon, in answer to your question is also, and probably a bit what Peter's saying is find an accountability partner. If your goals are that meaningful to you, we don't think there are too many things happening in the world today and it's happening quickly. So get someone to hold you accountable, but also find people who are interested in seeing your growth. Mm, yeah, I love uh, that even stronger. Yeah, that's yeah. True. because it's not just anybody. You have to find the right person. People that want to celebrate your success. You're right. Marlon, you said you had another question based on what Peter just said. Yeah, yeah thanks. Th thanks for that, guys. I think I think it's all valuable what you what you're saying. And and um, so so there's a lot of so you guys all seem like very very happy people. I mean, look at the smiles on your face. You must see us when we off the TV, off the studio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't you want to be around us. Uh, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's run TV. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so, That's yeah. my normal place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, look, obviously life is messy, right? And business yeah. and uh, the life of entrepreneurship is messy. How do you, and it's kind of leaning from that last conversation of, of like the motivation throughout the year, et cetera, but you guys answered perfectly in like, just, you know, in terms of maintaining a right focus and kind of knowing who you are is what I drew out of, out of that. Um, and these questions both, they lean on that. Um, is that, how do you now, cause obviously we want to be able to, um, cause I actually, I watched a video today that really blew me away. I don't know if you guys know that a pandemic comes in three did you know that no so like no. three years basically we're going to be stuck with this whole story right uh i follow a futurist and they were saying this because like this year with the with the with the whole uh what's that the 
the injection thing. Um, mm. uh, vaccine. The vaccine. The yeah. vaccine coming in. It's still going to be like a year of trial and testing, but basically with the winter in the north, and then the winter in the south, and then the winter in the north, it's, there's going to be a revolution. It's going to it's going to take about three years. Now, obviously, this is this is meaning emotions going up and down, um, continuous economic um, struggle, which is really no different from before pandemic. But how do you guys, you know, what's your suggestion now to like keep this going? Um, and I and I think this is leaning back to to what Peter's saying. But if I've got issues around around really staying motivated, around really knowing who I am, how do I now take these steps to to get connected, to find the right connect, right people, um, you know, and to be as happy as you guys are all the time? Because mm-hmm. I, I I want to say now I've seen you a few times. You guys are always smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me. Because this is so much fun, Marlon. It's, um, I actually had this conversation with uh, somebody just the other day um, saying, you know, if you, if you do sit back and say, explore ProTech uh, coffee shop, what is it doing for my business? The answer may be, well, you haven't got any new leads. I haven't um, necessarily had uh, new clients or done business. Maybe I've given away something or discounted something. But when you reflect, and and this person and I are both in the group, we were both saying exactly the same thing, that it was this this camaraderie, this opportunity to um, have people who reflect joy and happiness and excitement and passion and enthusiasm back at you because it's in our human nature to respond to that much more and of course we respond to negative so my my view on this um you know and i might have a a, a few years of of i should have gray hair by now but i've been putting it at bay um is is to focus on the best parts of life yes we'll all have difficult times we'll all have negative we may be sick somebody else may be sick the uh, the pandemic might be around for three years uh something there might be a bomb that goes off somewhere the fact is that all of those things generally are not in our control they're not in our control at all um and but if they are you can say to yourself can i do something about it in which case i will or won't but you make a choice but the majority of times these things are not in our control so my my perspective is you you accept it it is whatever it is you accept it and then you turn yourself around and go and look for the um the positivity and the joy in it i think it is what peter was saying i do absolutely concur you know, don't let these things get you down. Um, I tend to not, I don't listen to the news at all, actually, and haven't for years. However, it doesn't mean I'm ignorant. I'm aware of what's going on in the world, but I refuse to get sucked into Facebook news reels or Twitter or whatever. Um, and, it, and it works for me, <laughs> you know, it doesn't work for everyone. Uh, but I'm not ignorant of the facts. It's just, I choose to just, um, hear them, see them, accept them, ask myself the question, can I do anything about it? And if the answer is no, then feel some empathy for those that might be going through whatever it is, but turn yourself around within a reasonable uh, time frame and mm. go on to the other side more, you know, to, to, to be happy, whatever makes you happy, listen to music, go for a long walk, um you know phone a friend chat to someone have a coffee virtual cuppa i feel like you you know too many people in this world today i see are just letting themselves wallow in the negative and they just can't seem to climb out of it but none of us on the screen none of us have done that we're not letting ourselves wallow um we 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 got the grit and the determination and the resilience to move beyond that 
I also think we've all become very authentic with one another. So there are days when we're not as motivated, Marlon. We, they really are. And we feel, oh, but you know what? There's always somebody that you can reach out to. And all you have to do, you know, that, what is that saying? A problem shared is a problem halved or whatever the whole thing is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Sometimes you just need somebody that you can just go, you know, today is a crap day. It's a horrible day and I'm allowed to feel it. And I accept the fact that I'm not feeling great. But somebody out there will say, that's okay. Have a pity party for as long as you need to and then snap out of it. And I think that's the thing, you know, we don't always have to, Stephen's, you know, known me for quite a while as well. There are days when I show up and my smile's not as bright, um, but I'm there, I show up and by the end of the conversation, by the end of whatever we've done, my smile is right back there again, because sometimes that's all it takes. You just got to show up. And when you've got a place to show up in, it makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. Yeah. I just want to, you know, I want to ask uh, Marlon, uh, he asked the queer and, and Linda said that, um, she chooses not to watch the news, Karen, and you? No, I don't. You, you choose the same, Wolfgang, and you? Um, I watch public uh, TV. I'm not Facebook prep thingy, but um, the national news, yes. Okay, or, like, so international I, news, like, so I, I watch it. Okay, so you watch snippets of it, but you don't uh, spend too much time in it. And I do the same. So I also choose not to. I know what's going on, but I don't need to sit and read it every five minutes. So none of us do watch the news so none of us knew about this three-year thing and are you asking us why we're all happy because we don't know about it <laughs> <laughs> ignorance is bliss <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, i would i would not find i'm but, a lot I, I, we agree to disagree it's i would say like i'm not no, that is both can stop being so like this man yeah so, no, <laughs> No, but okay. you know, Marlon, I want to ask you, we, we do get, well, I do, I have, I have crappy days, man. Mm. But one thing I've learned over the, over the years, and this is through a, my coach, so I have a coach, because I go through the same, excuse me, crap that everybody else does, and the same, you know, uh, yeah. COVID's yeah. not uh, selective, yeah. COVID hits us all. And yeah. one thing I do want to, what I learned is, one thing was make emotions your friend, because they're the only friend that's going to be authentic with you when you're feeling down feel down don't fight it okay just understand why stop just stop and pause and find out what is being triggered why are you feeling down and then the trick is that i've learned is how long are you able to stay to stay in that space the shorter the better but that takes a lot of it takes work and it takes it's about self-awareness and being okay with being emotional. I think Brené Brown, you know, she talks a lot about it. Be okay with being vulnerable. I learned that really the hard way. You know, I thought I was bulletproof. Well, I learned the hard way that I'm not even close to it. <laughs> Can we hear from the wolf and the guys then we have to wrap this session up. We way over Why? again. <laughs> but Why? We, will have, we will have this panel back. Uh, because you've actually touched on so many like new amazing points that we still need to explore so we definitely have this panel back um but yeah for now let's hear from the wolf and then let's wrap up so i just like the uh, i think the emotions is the key like how we feel like you not know, something i get in the morning it's really bad morning i'm good and so and what i learned or the shortcut the trick stop this mind game because sometimes I wake up in the morning and my thoughts, I not even have opened my eyes and my brain's already are <clears throat> and the worst thing is when I look at the phone, then it's, I'm dead. Because I, then the, the, all these thoughts come over me and the thoughts create my feelings and then I just in a bad mood and don't do anything. So, but there is the thoughts and let's put it quick. The quick thing is you have to know your brain is really flexible. Your brain can go in the future and past in milliseconds. The only per part who is always here in the here and now is your body. So the body cannot go in the future. Your body cannot be in the past. It's only just here. So the trick is when I overthink or when this thing is I, I focus on my body. And there's a million tricks. You can there's breathing techniques to reach in your body. And um, there is, uh, I, do, I do, every morning I go up and have a sports exercise. It's, uh, I start, I have a dancing exercise every morning. And 
I'm you something I really that. looking. <laughs> yeah, I can share that. And Yay! Um, with your red hair. Yeah. yeah, with my red hair, you know, we will do this together, maybe or not. I don't know. But the thing is, sometimes I'm looking forward to that, and there's some mornings like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do it. But it's always it gets to be this 15 minutes. Some people like to work out. It's the same thing. It's this. I am arriving in my body. I don't. I stop thinking, and I'm just here in the here and now. And after the 50, uh, 50 minutes, I feel good. The thinking stops. So, and um, you can even do, do this with do a cold shower. Do just like being present. Like wash your hands with really. You can really hot water or really cold. In this moment, you are just thinking about fuck. This is hot. This is cold. In this moment, you're in the heat. <laughs> it's similar. Your brain is not anymore thinking about future and past. You're just here. And that's a break from all this emotional trauma. Mm. And then Good you can idea. go back to, and then you can go back on stage, meet all the other people, go up and smile. <laughs> Estine, can I, can I share easy uh, exercise to give to Marlon? One more, yeah. If I may, I learned this from the the coach of the Indian cricket side, South African guy. You know, I remember Gary Kirsten and Paddy Upton went there, and they got. You know how they got the guys to focus? They worked out that you cannot sing and think at the same time. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I didn't know that. We'll try it now. Like sing us. Sing a song. Paul. There you are. You ca while you're doing that, you're thinking of the words of the song. You can't think. Yes, I love that. Just try that. There you go, Linda. So not once in that song could you think of your business or what's happening around you. All you're thinking of is the words of the song. Okay. Win to clap. I love. Thank you so much, Stephen. There is nothing but. 21 is about singing. There you are. Yeah. And dancing. Sing, with, and dancing. sing with your tribe. So next time, bring your guitar, please. Yeah. Singing, yeah. dancing, and red hair. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, and your well, glee I job. Know, I don't know about you guys, but um, I plan on having an extremely successful 2021. And Here's to that. The, re yeah, yeah. The, re the reason I know that I can is because I've surrounded with myself with people that want to do exactly the same thing. Yeah. So definitely cheers to that. Panel, this has been epic. I love you guys so much. We are going to rock 2021. Yeah. For all our, our fans out there that are watching us um, go crazy. Like, guys, um, I hope you have a fantastic 2021. I hope this is the year where all your entrepreneurial dreams come true. I hope that you got as much value out of this panel discussion as I did. I learned so many new things. I am so raved up and excited and ready to get going with my, and I'm going to try all the different list methods because that's just how OCD I am. But I learned so much. We'll definitely have the panel back um, to discuss and delve. I think there's a lot of things we can delve more deeper into. Um, but I want to kind of leave you with this message because it's um, my, my responsibility in this tribe is to grow the tribe for all of us because the more amazing people we get, um, to, to join us that are like these people, these amazing people that I've had on the panel today and in the audience. The better for all of us. That's the secret. That's how we move together. That's where our positivity comes from. That's how, why we can move faster than every other you know, lonely entrepreneur out there before. So I'm going to end the show just by reading like a small little paragraph for you that Marlon wrote for me. Thank you, Marlon. So uh, Marlon is our storyteller. He helps us put words into the right perspective. So guys, here goes. It's very quick. I'm just going to read it for you. So, hi, my name is Nestine, and I am part of the Explore Protect tribe. We host networking events that help business owners get exposure to and connect with hundreds of credible business owners from various industries through online speed networking. Our growing community, these guys here, has helped companies scale and grow their businesses 10 times over. If you have a business in need of quality connections and you're looking to grow your business and your network, then I suggest you join us at our next global online speed networking event. So buy your ticket today and I'll pop the link for you in the description below. And 
I'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Nestine, Peter, <laughs> Thank you Linda, so much. Karen, the Wolf, Marlon. Thank you for that, bringing that great smile to this show. You have inspired us, and you've made my afternoon. Yeah. Awesome. You, and Steve, hug, hug yourself. Hug you guys, eh? It was all because of that, all, of, all of those beaming <laughs> smiles over there. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>